explain the ground lease? Ground lease pretty much is if I have a piece of land, I'm the owner, I can lease it. I'm going to use David as an example. I own a piece of land. I'm going to turn around to Dave and say, Dave, I'm going to lease this piece of dirt for you for 99 years. Let me, let me, let me take it back. 50 years at or 99 years. Tw- 90, average. They're average 50 to 99 years, but let's say 50 years. And I'm going to lease it to you for $50,000 a year. Um, here you go. You sign that agreement. And then depending on how the leases are structured, generally what the, what they are is Dave can turn around and develop a high rise and Dave owns the right to the high rise. Dave owns the right to the cash flow that the high ride generates. Um, as long as he paid me my rent, it's basically an expense line item for his expenses. Ground leases are common. One of the most common ground leases you'll see is a lot of it in, on the office side and also on the retail side, especially on the QSR, the fast food, the McDonald's of the world, the Wendy's of the world. They generally triple do net. Gr- triple net ground lease. Um, and this this article focuses more on the New York City market, if I'm not so mistaken. So it says, yes, you're, you are totally correct. It says, Bernardo Realty Trust says the land beneath its office building at 330 West 34th Street is worth $145 million. That's what the trust says that owns the building. The landowner, Hames Investment Company, claims its value is $225 million. So I said, the person that owns the office, one forty-five. they say the land's worth. The guy that owns the land says it's worth two twenty-five. dollars It's a big difference. Huge. Entitling the guy that owns the land to more than $5 million in additional annual rent that's going to come from the owner of that building. So if you're not ready for, if, if you own whatever your business is, and if you're saying that you've been paying $5, let's make an easy number, right? $5 a year for rent. And you're up and for that renewal. rent goes to $20 and your business can't deal with that. Then that's a, you know, you, you could be it's underwater a, right there. It's a domino effect because if you have financing, financing contingents on what we talked about DSCR, right? that line item expense for the ground lease payment increases, your DSCR decreases. So if you have a loan with a lender based on what we consider the leasehold interest, which is the landlord, the rights, not the landlord, the tenant, which is the owner of the building, he got financing based off the cash flow that the building generating. They're gonna lend him based off of the DSCR. So it can have a domino effect. Yeah, man, it says that the article, this is from the real deal, like, Ralph said, assuming no further hikes, that would be nearly $170 million over the course of Bernardo's 30-year lease. Says also to reiterate what Ralph explained, ground leases in which a party agrees to develop a vacant property that will eventually be returned to the owner. Often, after several decades, are ubiquitous in New York City, but so are the legal battles they cause. Such disputes have embroiled some of Manhattan's most iconic properties, including the Chrysler Building, the Plaza Hotel, the Lever House. Nearly all of them spring from disagreements over how to calculate future rent. Hysterically, the, historically, rent is reset for these long-term leases every 20 to 30 years, often based on the estimated fair market value of the property if, if we're still a developable plot. The discrepancy between how appraisers interpret this often invites litigation. Yeah. To avoid that, some have opted for incremental increases based on inflation. This newer model worked when inflation was steady, providing relatively predictable rent growth. That dynamic has changed dramatically. There's been a shock to the rock to the marketplace since. Um, during the industry, even I was just was, uh, escalations over time are not going to work. It says, yeah, we don't see much, gro- at least in my experience. Um, I, we leases. don't see their ground leases, but the ground leases we've encountered have been more in the suburban Broward, at least I have, um, market the Fort Lauderdale suburban market right along the Fort Lauderdale community airport, executive airport corridor. A lot of those office buildings are on ground leases with the city of Fort Lauderdale. Um, we're, we don't see them as much as probably other markets where it's so common that pretty much in New York city, it's such a common thing. I believe, I mean, up and down New York, most of Manhattan's on ground lease. Yeah, but 
it's all right to be on a ground lease, especially like what they were saying with where inflation was tied to the CPI. Right, you know, and right, everything right. has been yeah. going up to two and a half, three percent year after year after year. And now you come into this different um environment where things have inflated twenty percent. Jeez. So imagine that's just bad timing. Yeah, of course. If you're the if you're the building owner and your and your ground lease is coming to fair market, it's like what do you do? Especially if you've had it for fifty plus years, which you know. This is in a stable marketplace, you will see perhaps less a difference in valuation. As real estate investment trusts, Bernardo and SL Green are limited in how they can negotiate rent resets, but some landlords and tenants have gotten creative. A partner in Freed Frank's real estate litigation department said appraisals based on the fair market value of the land can make it more difficult for the tenant to secure financing, given the threat of an unknown and potentially massive rent hike. She yeah. said landlords and tenants have turned to alternatives in recent years, including flat percentage increases, as well as those based on CPI, like I just mentioned, and gross revenue. She expects the current market uncertainty to drive more parties to try these and other models for new ground leases and when negotiating renewals. A smart landlord who is looking at a long term is going to realize there is something in it for them to agree to modify those provisions. She said, noting that financial survival of the tenant is often in the landlord owner's best interest so they're gonna go to court yeah right but to use your phrase at the end of the day they need the tenant yeah of course so they can't raise it so high that the tenant can't if the stay tenant, if, if it's tenant default the landlord stuck with the building yeah and then what and then what so it, 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 especially in new york yeah it's not a small building no we're not talking about a bodega no we're talking about a we're not talking about little Havana. <laughs> we're talking, we're talking about, about a million about a tower. plus towers here but it's interesting right they're very interesting no one thinks about that no of course not your normal person walking down the sidewalk does not think about this land is leased yeah this guy doesn't own this building mm -hmm. you yeah. know yeah it lucrative. Listen, if you're if you're the landlord on a, on a ground lease, it's very lucrative. You're just sitting there collecting money. That's it. You're not even paying the real estate taxes. You're just collecting money. And again, we're back to at least down here. The well, it's most, like legacy wealth, right? It's like yeah, that's really what it is. Passed on, passed on, passed, passed on, on, passed on, passed on. You know, it, down here, I mean, the most common ground leases I've seen. Are more the McDonald's of the world. That's a common Wawa, thing for Wawa. McDonald's. Wawa. Um, some Wendy's. Um, they're out there. They're out there. They're out there. But it's not as prevalent as it is in the Northeast. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, at least in my experience, it's not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing. This is a segment here in our, our market that we're not seeing. I heard seeing. like Mexico, everything's like the whole you can't own like the government owns it's all 99 year lease so the government owns the land everything everything yeah yeah but then you know that's a little different than here because if the government owns a ground lease government turn around and say you know i'm taking over this building where there in yeah there in mexico yeah yeah here the government just sells it yeah i mean who knows i mean i don't know they do yeah it's a, we were on a phone call today where they're Negotiating the city. That's true. The city, the municipalities. Yeah. Yeah. When you say government, rights. in my mind, I automatically went federal, but you're right. The local oh. government, the municipalities. Sell everything. So sell everything. It will sell you the alley. Yeah. You know, we want the taxes. Yeah. That's all they care about. What's the tax revenue? Because that's how they make their money. So.